Hey, thanks for having me on the show. My, not to go down, my mom's first job was at Chili's, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so it's like to this day, we, it's kind of like a family tradition. I, maybe that's true for a lot of people. You guys have been around for some time. Yeah, I mean, over the years, there's been hundreds of thousands of uh, folks that we call affectionately chili heads. And chili heads <laughs> love to have a good time. They love to service the guest. And uh, your mom was no exception. Well, yes. Uh, these brands are, are also reassuring when you're on the road and you're looking for something familiar. And they've kind of become the neighborhood restaurants in a lot of parts of town. Um, but it looks like price increases are kind of running out and maybe traffic's drying up a little bit. Yeah, you know, the industry is facing, you know, some traffic softness. You know, what we can do is be focused on two really important things. One is to have leadership value uh, in the industry. So we have a 1099 uh, three for me meal. It's almost a half pound burger fries, bottomless chips and salsa and a bottomless drink just for 1099. I mean, that's better than not just all of casual dining, but really anything you can get in fast casual or in fast food. And it's just a very, very high quality meal. The second thing that we're focused on is uh, increasing the experience or improving the, the guest experience. You know, we know if people are gonna pull back on trips, they're gonna look for restaurants they know they can trust like Chili's. And so if we can continue to elevate the guest experience and all of our guest scores in the last six months have dramatically increased server attendance, food grade scores, whether a guest has a problem has gone way down. Those are things that are, are gonna bode well for us on traffic and long-term success. And so far that strategy has really worked for us the past six months. You know, we've won, we've uh, ran well ahead of the industry on sales and we expect that to continue for a while. Your comparable sales were up 6.6%, .6 even though in some cases traffic was down a little bit or flattish. So I assume that that, that, that increase in sales uh, was due to price increases. Yeah, it's partially due to price increases, just based on the inflation that the industry has, has mm -hmm. seen over the last you know 18 months. But the other thing is the guests that are coming are, are they're buying more things. They're so more. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So for example, we have what's called a barbell strategy. So for example, in margaritas, you, if you shop the value menu, you can get a three dollar and forty nine cent margarita with your value meal, your three for me meal. Then we have a six dollar margarita of the month, which is always you know a very premium. Uh, margarita. We have one uh, in this month as uh, it's called a, the tequila trifecta, which has three different tequilas in it. But then, if you want our, you know, our uh, piece de la resistance, the Presidente, the best-selling margarita in the entire world, that's nine dollars. And then you could even go up to a Casamigos super premium margarita for uh, over fourteen dollars. So the reality is, whatever money that you have, if you want to join or you want to come to casual dining, you can come to Chile and get a great experience. So you're giving more opportunities uh, to sort of step people up maybe a little bit in, in what they spend. You made me thirsty there. Um, but so let, let me ask you the other side of the question. How much have your costs uh, gone up, either the, either the input costs, mean, meaning food, um, uh, transportation costs, uh, staff costs, pick the time period over the past year, past two years. How much higher are they today than they were? Yeah, so our, our the past fiscal that just ended in June, um, really the theme was both food inflation uh, as, well as, as well as wage inflation. Mm -hmm. This fiscal year that started for us in July, it's really mostly just wage inflation. We expect uh, food inflation to be in the low single digits. But when you add up the, the wage inflation and some of the other costs like utilities that are going up, you know, that's a $100 million headwind for our business. And so... Right. You know, we're going to do a little bit of pricing. We're going to try to drive what we call mix, so get more premium items in the basket. But I think as long as we can protect that value, that value uh, customer with that three for me uh, value meal, which is better than really anything that you see in the industry, I think we're going to be okay. You know, it looks like Subway is getting closer to a sale to a private equity firm. Uh, first time it's changing hands, Kevin. You guys obviously have a couple of brands. You have Chili's, you have Maggiano's. It's just Wings, which is kind of a Texas-based company. Um, would you ever look, you know, maybe it's not Subway, but would you ever look to add brands to the portfolio or is the next move spinning them off? I mean, it's, it's kind of an odd mix, honestly. Yeah, well, right now, we're focused on our new strategy. It's just about improving the floral economics of owning a Chili's and owning a Maggiano's, which means, number one, winning with the guest, whether it's having leadership value or incredible guest experiences. You know, we need to make sure that we do that because if we do that, the guests will continue to come back, uh, will grow sales, and will obviously increase profits. That's what we're focused on right now. Quite frankly, there's a lot of M&A activity that we, that we watch and we monitor. We're focused right now on making Chili's and Maggiano's uh, uh, floral economics just continue to get better and better.